Hello, everyone. I'm Martin. I'm coming to you from Adana Labs, which is a maker of open source software. Uh, if you've heard of Unbound or uh, NSD, that's us. Um, we are stationed in the Netherlands, where 2018 was the year where route origin uh, validation with RPKI actually went, finally went into production with uh, various uh, ISPs filtering based on RPKI information. And it's actually high time that that happens because uh, route leaks and route hijacks have made it well, definitely into the uh, trade press. And if it's about Bitcoin, then it also makes it into the mainstream uh, media. The reason why uh, we can actually do this now, why it's worth investing in this, is that the coverage of ROAS uh, for the IP space uh, has reached pretty decent levels. Um, for instance, here in Germany, it's 47% of the IPv4 address space. So it actually makes sense um, to invest time uh, in, in setting this up. Um, the reason why we have this coverage is in, in, in the RIPE region is thanks to the RIPE NCC, um, which has invested quite some time in making creating ROAS easy. So if you have a bunch of uh, prefixes from the RIPE region, you just go into their web page, click around. You don't have to run your own CA or anything. Um, that's pretty convenient if indeed you have only a few prefixes and a few ASNs and if everything is relatively stable. It becomes a bit annoying if uh, you have loads of them and stuff changes all the time then just going in and clicking all the time um, becomes annoying, which means probably you might want to run your own um, CA, um, which there's actually two things you need to run. You need to have the CA, which creates the uh, certificates and the ROAS and all of that stuff, and you need to run a publication server, um, which then publishes this stuff for the world to see it. Um, we have committed to building both of these. Um, to make it easier for uh, large companies to deploy RPKI as well. Um, the state of this currently is roughly there. Um, um, I'm bringing this up mostly because if you're interested in running your own CA, then I would encourage you to go to the URL that's pointed out there, have a look at our plans and see if they fit with what you need. And if they don't, then please talk to us so that we can make software that is actually useful for people. Um, more interestingly is the other side, um, the routing side, where you actually use the RPKI information to filter routes um, based on their RPKI status. The way this normally works is you don't let your routers do it. You have a special software, which is called relying party software, or sometimes uh, a, a RPKI cache, um, which basically goes off, collects all the information from RPKI, and validates, does all the crypto, validates this, and produces a list of valid routes or valid route origins that are then f are given to the routers um, to filter a route announcement based on this. Um, we figured that's a pretty good thing to start our RPKI adventures with uh, because it's relatively compact. We also use this um, to, as a test bed to find out if using a relatively new language called Rust in production is viable. Um, it took us about six weeks to write uh, the software, so I think it is. Um, we named it Routinator. Um, three weeks ago, I think roughly, we made the first release, the first uh, 0.1 release, so it's still in beta, but uh, seems to be working. We have positive reports. Um, one of the things that are really cool about Rust is that the build system is exceptionally uh, Simple. These four steps here are everything you need to do to get Routinator installed on a virgin uh, Debian system. So you need rsync and the C toolchain. The C toolchain mostly just for the, uh, the crypto stuff. You need to get Rust, which this is the way they, they recommend. Um, well, make of that what you want. Um, you don't need to be root, so maybe it's not that dangerous. Um, you need to get the Rust stuff into your into your path, and then you basically just let Cargo find the routinator in a package repository, find all the dependencies, build it, and you're good to go. Um, it installs this into your path as well, so all you need to say is routinator. Because we made it work with uh, same defaults, it comes uh, including, uh, it comes with the five trust anchors from the five RIRs included as well. So really, the only thing you need to say is Routinator and uh, hit Enter, and then it goes, or rather, it won't. Um, because 
Erin doesn't let us ship with their towel because lawyers or something. Um, and we decided to um, not do what the RIPE NCC validator did, which was just not have it, um, because uh, research has shown that a substantial amount of RPKI deployments in the wild just don't has, uh, has the Erin towel. So we instead decided by default to just refuse to work until you go whatever it says there. Um, and then once you've done that, you can uh, try again. And what it will do is it will do the whole uh, RPKI thing. It will fetch all the stuff, validate it, and spit out a list of um, origins. So you can have them in CSV. You can have them in uh, JSON. Or you can even have them in uh, RPSL. Um, we originally didn't include information about the trust uh, anchor that was used to validate this. Um, turns out that at least, I think, a route server absolutely wants that, so the next release will also include information <coughs> about the tau. Um, it also does RTR, so if you run it like that, um, you can just point your router to that address there, and then uh, it can do it can get its, its uh, filtering information from this uh, router nature. How does it stack up? If you have used um, the RPKI validator from the RIPNCC, which is a Java thing and uh, uh, very resource hungry, well, uh, let's start with a couple of information. Um, the repository currently consists of about 42,000 files that need to be validated, at which amounts to about 400, uh, 240 megabytes. Um, if you run Routinator and just check the memory consumption, and it comes out at about 62 megabytes on, on Linux. I've seen on Mac it was only 12 megabytes. I think this is mostly because uh, the way that memory consumption is, is calculated. Um, how long does it take to validate? Well, most of the time it obviously spends in rsync. Um, there's a minus n option here to say don't do the rsync, just validate, and then it takes about six seconds on my um, core i7 Magic laptop nowadays, um, which means this is probably good enough to run it on more modest hardware, which we did, and it takes a little longer there, um, but that's definitely a viable option there as well. Um, so um, I would absolutely encourage you to try out uh, the Routinator and, more importantly, to deploy RPKI uh, uh, validation in your networks. Uh, we have started a mailing list for all things of uh, all things RPKI related. It's not just about Routinator and our stuff. Um, it's very new. We just started it on the last ITF, uh, but I think there's already quite a bunch of uh, knowledgeable people hanging out there, so um, that might be worthwhile. And we also started an FAQ with the typical questions. It's an open source project as well, so you can go to the GitHub thing there and uh, also um, create issues if something's unclear, stuff like that. And for Routinator itself, um, it lives on GitHub. Um, we well, uh, welcome issues and pull requests and that sort of stuff. If you don't want to do this publicly, then we have this email address here. And if you want to follow the exploits of the little rocket, then that happens on the Twitter on that account. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.